guys it's Laura thank you so much for watching and welcome back to my channel in today's video I will show you how I made my newest two-in-one piece which is high waist jeggings slash dungarees I always wanted to make myself dungarees because I really like the way they look but very often when I try them on in stores they do not fit ideally and also I wanted to have them made of a really stretchy material so that they would be super comfy so I have decided to make my own dungarees and when I was designing the piece I thought it would be super cool to make the flaps removable because not only I would have two pieces in one but it would be also so much more practical so if you ever had dungarees on with a sweater and you went to a mall or to a restaurant and you, ha you had to go potty you probably know what I'm talking about you have to undress the sweater then you have to remove at least one of the straps and then when you put your pants down when you go to the toilet you have to be super careful that you won't dip them in something that might be super super gross i know this is too much information but to my defense this is totally relevant for this tutorial that's why i'm telling you this so i thought it would be also easier uh, on daily basis when you go to the toilet you can easily just remove the flaps put the jeggings down and then button the flaps on again and you don't even have to undress your sweater so i thought that's actually a good idea so i had to share this with you guys so if you want to know how i made my high waist jeggings slash dungarees then please keep watching I will not cover in today's video how I made the high waist jeggings because I already have a tutorial for that. I will link the video down below. I also explained in that video how I designed the pattern. There is only one difference. Uh, when I was making the first jeggings I have used this waistband which is two and a half inches wide and this time I have used a much wider waistband. This is four inches. I found one that is really soft and that stretches out easily and this one was really perfect for this project so that's the only difference but the procedure remains the same so if you haven't seen that video I would suggest to watch it first it's linked down below and now we will proceed with the flaps for the dungarees here I have the front flap and the back piece for my dungarees let's start with the front piece so the fabric is 19 inches wide in total it has been folded once in the middle and the height is 12.75 inches before i sew those sides together i will first of all iron on a rectangle of iron on interfacing with an additional strap for the top where the buttons will be this is a non-stretchy one because what i want to achieve is that the flap will keep its shape and then I will also sew on a pocket. So the pocket has been already folded in place and all those parts have been pinned together as you can see. But I will tell you the measurements. So I made the piece of fabric for my pocket 9 inches wide and 8 inches high. I folded those sides only once in place and this side, this is the top part, is folded twice in. Now let's have a look at the back piece. So the height is the same as for the front piece, which is 12.75 inches. The bottom is 8.5 inches wide. And if you would follow this line to the top, then here it would be 3.5 inches wide, which is also this width, but I have cut it a little bit at angles. This is where I will sew on the straps. So as for the front piece, I will iron on a piece of iron on interfacing on one side first and then I will sew on the straps first and then I will start sewing those two pieces together. But you will see that in today's tutorial anyway. Here I have my straps. Uh, the fabric is 3.75 inches wide in total and I folded each strap once in the middle. I will sew them together on the side, but before I do that I will iron on a strip of iron-on interfacing on one half so that they will keep shape. It is also non-stretchy iron-on interfacing. The width has been basically determined by the buckles that I picked for my dungarees. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see the shade and how the buckle looks like. So the buckle has those little teeth here. So you simply pull the strap through and then you close the buckle and it will stay in place, which is very lovely. It is so easy to adjust the length of the straps. And then I picked uh, buttons in the same shade, so simple denim buttons that will be just put on, so no need to sew them on, which is very nice. It saves a lot of time and of course it goes with the entire look. Here we have the 
plastic snaps that I will use for the front and for the back piece of my dungarees. So when I designed those two-in-one jeggings slash dungarees, I immediately thought of those because this side is the one that I will sew on the inside of the waistband because this is super flat and there is nothing scratchy on it so those pieces won't disturb you whenever you remove the flaps. In order to make sure that I would have the exactly same width of my straps I attached the guide to my sewing machine and the guide was copying the outer edge of my straps while I was sewing and I have used a regular straight stitch. Once the straps have been sewn together, this is what they looked like. You can clearly see that I made a triangular shape at the end of one side. Next I turned the straps to the good side with the help of a brush, which allowed me to push the triangular end to the other side easily. Then I shaped any edges and pinned the sides in place. I have sewn the edges through with a regular straight stitch and here is what my straps looked like once I hooked the buckle on. As a next step I marked where I wanted my pocket to be. I always mark the middle and make sure that the position will be symmetrical. I have sewn the pocket on in two rows of a regular straight stitch and as you can see I have decided to make more compartments on one side, for example for pens or for tools. And then I started pinning the sides of my front flap together. I left a bit of an open space on the bottom for later so that I could turn the flap to the good side. After I have sewn the sides with a regular straight stitch, I cut all edges at angles for a neater shape. Next I turned the front flap to the good side and shaped all edges and pinned them in place. Then the front flap looked like this. I have sewn around the edges with a regular straight stitch, then I marked the places for my buttons. And once I attached the buttons, my front flap was done. Now my jeggings are almost done. The only remaining part I have to sew through is the bottom edge of the waistband, but it is pinned in place and that will hold for the time being. I put them on just to make sure that everything is in place as I want it to. That's what I always do before I make the final step. And once I had them on, I figured I should also pin in the front flap so that I could measure the length of the straps. So I hooked the straps in place, then I have thrown them to the back and since the height of the front piece and of the back piece is the same. I figured that the straps would end up about here once they will be sewn in. So I cut back a bit of the straps. Actually it's not really a bit, it's quite a lot, but this is how much I had to cut back because I was very generous with the amount of fabric. And then I took the back piece and I have pinned the straps in place to the angled side. So as you can see I have also folded the middle of the back piece to one side and I have sewn it through and this is how the straps look like once they are pinned in place. So once I've done that I took the flap with the back piece and I have thrown it to my back and then I turned towards my mirror with my back I folded the bottom edge of the back piece a little bit in because um, I will lose the seam allowance once I will sew on the second layer and then I held it to my waistband and as you can see it goes a little bit too far uh, to the bottom so I think I will still cut the straps back but 
only about an inch and that should do it doesn't have to be perfect because I can still adjust them later with the help of the buckle although I don't want those ends to be too long so when it's something like plus minus half an inch that's fine so that will work so I can start working on the back piece so I attached the straps at angles and sewn them on I folded the seam inside and put the other piece from my back flap on good sides facing each other. I pinned all in place and I have sewn the pieces through with a regular straight stitch. I cut all edges at angles in order to achieve a sharper shape and then I turned the flap to the good side. As a next step I shaped all edges and sides nicely and pinned them in place. And then I have sewn around the edges with a regular straight stitch, which you have probably already guessed by now. Now this is the finished back piece. I had to make one change uh, before I finished my dungarees. I had to change the angle at which the straps have been sewn on. Now this has been the original angle. And as you can see now the angle is much flatter. So what I have done was I cut back the top of the back piece, which was exactly one and a half inches. Then I opened the stitches a little bit on this side and then I have attached the straps at a bit flatter angle. I have sewn them in place. Then I turned this piece to the other side. I have folded the fabric here in so that it would align. And then I have sewn the edges through and I've also additionally hand stitched these edges so that they wouldn't open and I find that it lays much better on my back it looks much better and I have to admit it also looks better when the straps meet in the middle because there was a little space between them before and I did not like that so whenever you design something and whenever you're making the piece for the first time just like I'm doing right now with you guys it is possible that you will have to make a few changes so be open for that and I personally find that we always learn something from it. I drew a line about an inch below the top edge of the waistband and marked the spots for the snaps. And then I have sewn the snaps in place on both the good side of the flaps and the inside of the waistband. I made sure I was using the flat parts of my snaps inside of the waistband so that they wouldn't bother me. And once that was done, I could button my flaps to the jeggings and I was done. So this is how I made my high waist jeggings slash dungarees. I hope that you liked this idea. I also hope that you enjoyed today's video. If that was the case, don't forget to give the video a thumb up and you can also share it with your friends or with anyone who, who you think might be interested in this idea. And you can also follow me on Instagram. All of my Instagram accounts are linked down below together with my vlogging channel that I started recently. So if you're interested in vegan eats, lifestyle stuff, uh, talking also about some more serious stuff like depressions, anxiety and also about some more joyful stuff like self-love and motivation. You are very welcome there. I have linked down below also several videos that might be interesting for you and thank you so much for watching. It's always a pleasure filming videos for you. I love you guys so much and I'm looking forward to seeing you with my next project. So see you soon. Bye!